Sean Jackson here, Lombie Agribusiness in the East region. Um, I'm here today with Ken Shroud from Volac. He's here looking at a few maize crops um, throughout Ireland at the moment. He's the Ecosil forage expert here um, covering Ireland. Um, we're looking at this crop. This crop is nearly eight foot tall. It's in a Wicklow Kildare border and sown mid to the end of April. Um, and get Ken just to talk about the crop and see what stage yeah. it's at and where yeah. we are from a additive point of view to optimise the, the potential for this crop in the pit. Yeah, absolutely. As you, as you say, we've got a very brave crop of maize here. Uh, the interesting thing is that the uh, we've got a couple of good cobs on a lot, lot of these plants. Some of them got single cobs. But the mainstay of it is this is what we're growing it for. This is the important fact of it all. Um, the plant is secondary. So what we've got to remember is when we're judging this crop, getting it ready for harvest, we go by the condition of the crop, the maturation of the crop. So what I've got here, I've got a few few cobs here that I've, I've taken off the plants now, and some from different areas now, just to show the different stages. So this year generally we've got good cob development. Uh, all the grains are nicely formed. There's no snouting on these cobs at all. Uh, I've seen very little sign of that this year. So we're in for a good harvest on the maize. And now what we've got to do, we've got a crop here that's worth 45 euros a tonne. What we need to do is now to ensure that we get this crop harvested at, the, in, at its uh, optimum time, uh, get it into the pit, get it uh, under cover, get it sheeted down, and make sure that when we feed it out, we've still got a crop that's worth 45 euros. But yeah. this is not a cheap crop to grow, so we have to make sure we hit things right. So what we're trying to achieve is, is an overall dry matter of the plant and the cob at around about 30% dry matter in the pit. Okay, so, and, and that will depend on, uh, literally, on what state this cob is, or the, what the plant is, after we've decided that we're gonna go and harvest it. The plant comes secondary. So we don't look at the plant when we're looking for harvest. We get into the field, we walk several rows in, and we start assessing the crop generally right the way through. So what we've got here, this is uh, a cob here. If you put your thumb, this is how you test the cob. You strip the cob back, and then what you do, you put your thumbnail into here, right? So as you can see there, you get spat at, there's the milk there, there it goes. And then halfway up the cob again, you're gonna get the same. So this cob is several weeks off of uh, harvest date. The other way to do it, if you snap it in half, then you'd be looking and you see there's what we call a milk line. We'll show it to you on another one, but there's no milk line there whatsoever at the moment. Okay, so there's none there at all, all right? But what we'll do though, and then we'll step on, we'll put those down there. This is another cob taken on. This is the one's a bit further on. So you put your thumbnail in here and you can see that's a bit harder, it's still milky, but the coloration's starting to change. Um, I'm trying to look for a few indentations there, no indentations still there. So although this is starting to yellow up, it's starting to be a little bit cheesy in places, um, but still, still milky at the top there. So that cob's still way away uh, and no real milk line there forming yet at the moment, okay? And what we'll do now, we'll go to a cob that's a lot more further advanced. And you'll see now, you start to see dentations, indentations starting to form in the kernels, okay? So this is showing signs of maturation. And if I put my nail into this down here, that's getting harder to put my nail into there. And you can see we're gone past the cheesy stage and it's starting to get to a crumbly, crumbly effect and you can see the starch in there that dry powdery stuff there and we go halfway up the cob and again it's hard to get the nail in there so yeah, we know it's fully dry yeah it's it? fully dry um i mean this has been a bit falsified in a sense because it's been in the car for a day so it is starting to dry out but the important thing is if we then snap that cob in half now we're starting to see the milk line you see that yellow band in around the outside of the kernel that is the milk line so what that is there you've got the sugary part of the kernel there where it's softer and then where it turns yellow that's where the starch is formed so it's going from sugar to starch and when that starch line becomes between a third and halfway across that kernel so if it's round about that area there that's time to harvest it that's the crucial point that's the trigger point between a third and halfway across that kernel that's it you get on your phone your contract or whatever like that ideally you want to do that about two or three days before and just to allow for the you know get the contact get the contractor in but that's the, that's the crucial time. So then off we go with it. During that time then, what I would expect farmers to be doing is preparing their pits. They should have it already done in that, but uh, I can't emphasize enough to make sure that we've got side sheets down. Okay, it's so important. Uh, when you seal that pit up, you keep the carbon dioxide in. If you've got leakage of carbon dioxide coming from the fermentation, if carbon dioxide's coming out, then air's coming in. And air is the destroyer of good quality silage. So we need to prevent that. And there's a few other things that we can do to help that, and that's by using a good quality additive. Now we're very fortunate here with Volat that we've uh, got Ecosol products. 
Now within here, this is EcoCool. This is specifically designed for high dry matter crops, uh, maize being one of them. You can use it on whole crop um, and you can use it on high dry matter grasses. But here we are in the maize season. This is perfectly uh, used for uh, maize in Solomon. Now what we got here, we've got um, MTD1. We've got the world's most proven lactobacillus plantarum strain in here, like we have in the Ecosol 100 that we use on grass. So that's in here. And then on top of that, as a, uh, so we use that to get the fermentation right. So in these stay green, stay green varieties, that's important because we've still got a lot of residual sugars in this plant. So this is gonna go into the pit fairly green. So we need to get that in salt properly, make use of those sugars and get the, fer uh, the fermentation going in this, okay? And get the pH down. Now on top of that, then we've got Lactobacillus buchneri. Now uh, the buchneri is there to increase the level of acetate in the, in the pit. Now what that's, in here to do is to uh, take control of the yeast, suppress the yeast and uh, stop the moulds forming so that when you take that sheet off then instead of the uh, as the air hits the clamp where those uh, yeast and sugars are uh, the yeast start feeding on the sugars it's and the air and that, the pit face. It, it is it's secure in the pit face and it's giving you anywhere between a week and nine days to get across that pit without having deterioration of your crop like I say I keep saying this you've got a 45 euro crop here let's look after it and this is a very, very cost-effective way of doing it. Now this product is, uh, uh, contractors love it because it's suitable for ultra low volume. You can use it as standard application, yeah. but it's, it's liquid only. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't do a dry product on this, but with the market going towards, more going towards liquid, then this, this is the product that contractors use the stuff and, and the It is, yeah, you mix the stuff in the bottle and if you take a couple of spare bottles with it, the contractors love it. There's no stop go, you haven't got to cart loads and loads of water around. And that bottle there treats 100 tonnes. And then you're talking about powder, back, back to what will be common in this area, will yeah. be the old po yeah. powder products. Yeah. So we have the standard product of powder as well. Yeah, we do. So what we've got there, if, if you've got uh, guys that are still uh, not down at the ultra low volume liquid route, then yeah. we've got double action eco corn that's been around a few years now. Yeah. Uh, and this is the, the same MTD1, the same lactobacillus plantarum, the most proven strain of lactobacillus plantarum in the world. Yeah. Uh, so we got that in there uh, at a rate to do the, deal with the fermentation mm -hmm. and then we're using potassium sorbate which is a food grade yep. uh, preservative there to knock the yeast and molds dead so it does the same job mm. but uh, this is a different format. Yeah, slightly different format this is available uh, for standard application in liquid but also in dry mm, so the farmer has got a choice so yep. uh, you've got a two-year shelf life with the eco cool eco cool has a two-year shelf life and like I say, you can use that on, uh, it's not crop specific, you can use that on hydrant matter grasses, brown bales, and whole crop. Yeah. So there's no excuse not to have some of that on the farm. Yeah, okay, yeah. so it's, it's there. Covering two, yeah, it's covering all bases, two years shelf life, and with a double action eco corn, you've got a 30, -ish, a 30 month shelf life. Okay, good. so two very good products, well proven. Very good. Any further information, uh, contact your local branch or business manager, and we'll be delighted to follow up on the calls and we have it in stock and branches as well okay thanks thanks Kevin. okay no thanks very much cheers